Hi, this is Kashish. Welcome to a new episode of Business Odyssey. Hi, I'm Lakshmi, based out in Bangalore, India. Hello, I'm Laura, curious by nature. Today, we are joined by Anastasia Arfanova from Latvia. She has three plus years of experience in the people of field and she immerses us in her global experience performing the role in a startup while going through a merge and acquisition transformation. You will hear about trust, human-centric approach, long-term relationships and more. Happy learning! Hello, Anastasia. Thank you so much for being in our podcast and bringing such interesting and amazing topics today to our conversation today. But before we move on to the topic and have that conversation, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Of course, sure. Hello, Laura. Uh, thank you a lot for inviting me here today for this discussion. Uh, I'm happy to share my thoughts and insights about what my professional experience has been regarding this topic specifically and in general. Um, as mentioned in my bio, I'm a HR enthusiast with a very, so to say, people-centric approach, adapted steering organizational change and implementing innovative solutions for business success. Um, I have joined the field not so long ago, almost three years only, but um, and have focused on people operations specifically, but uh, despite the fact I'm not so long here, um, I have already figured out how I would like to develop myself further um, and what is the direction that interests me the most. Um, and I would like to uh, first say that in my opinion, uh, human resources is uh, definitely one of the main functions of every business because it specifically deals with uh, people who form the culture and who form the end product of every business. So um, I find this topic specifically very, very crucial and important for every organization um, because trust and and transparency is something that creates um, the progress for everything and everyone. Um, And um, today I would like to actually speak not only as an HR professional, but also as an observer of HR processes uh, even before I ended up in HR, uh, when I used to work as specialist in other fields as well. And uh, one of the perspectives I would like to discuss it from is uh, change of tra- or trans- transformation of the whole organization or its individual elements, uh, because um, I, as an observer of different uh, elements inside the organization, even before I was an HR specialist, Um, I actually find it very interesting how organizational changes uh, when when it comes to some global transformation and what are the processes behind this. So um, I'm I'm very, very, um, I will be very happy to actually share it with you today. And uh, maybe even before uh, we start digging deeper into what are my personal insights, I would also like to mention one of my favorite quotes by Jack Walsh, uh, the former chairman and CEO of General Electric. Uh, I'm not sure whether everyone knows who that is, but just just the the short uh, to have a short understanding for everyone. Um, and it sounds like this: trust happens when leaders are transparent. And uh, what I mean by transparency is that people are actually aware of what what is going on, of the procedures of different processes inside the organization, what is the main focus and main goals of the business uh, for the foreseen, foreseeable future, and also how is the company going to approach the change if transformation happens, and of course as well how the change will affect the processes related to culture and employees specifically. Yeah. It's, it's- I hear you uh, like a lot of things coming to my mind. Uh, First, thank you for the introduction and also what you are going to talk today. Um, I uh, I mean, trust and transparency are 
key, like you said, uh, is key to everything that we do in life uh, because we are social humans being and we are social by nature. So we need to uh, relate with other people at different levels. And at the same time, is how do we relate, to, relate with them um, by building those kind of um, relationships that need to be based on truth as well and into transparency. So, yeah, um, I kind of, it's like I relate to that and I agree with that too. Um, so is before we move into the insights and the experience, I would like to understand what is for you transparency and trust? What is the meaning of that for you? Yeah, so the meaning of transparency for me is when I actually know what executives and leaders are doing and what are the main goals of, of the business. And when I actually know my role and also one of the very important things is when I can voice my opinion and when I'm not taking for granted inside the organization, meaning, meaning that I'm valued I do have my personal opinion about everything that is going on. I do understand my role and my position inside the organization. And I do understand I probably do not have uh, such voice as someone uh, that is um, in, at the executive level. However, I, I do have my opinion that I can voice and we can actually discuss it, whether I don't like something and whether I do like something. And this is a very, very crucial thing because as I mentioned, I have a very, very people-centric approach and um, I believe we all should have it like this because uh, when it comes to any change, when it comes to something very transformative, something very global, then it's very, very important how people perceive this because at the end, this will be people who will actually be facing the change and that will be trying to somehow adapt to it. And if they do not understand what is going on, it's not going to work. And this is what I have actually seen in different organizations. And unfortunately, I'm not in this field for um, like longer period and enough time to, to actually, um, and actually I didn't have enough opportunity to, to have this global impact on this, but this is my current observation. And this is where I want to dig deeper currently uh, because I see there is not no link. Well, the link is not as strong as I wanted it to be uh, between the, the employees, the regular ones and between the leadership executives and their ideas. Hmm. So uh, I mean, thank you for sharing that. So what do you see related to uh, transformation on a global transformation? What do, what do you see and what do you experience and your insight related to global transformations? <laughs> and when it's come to strategy, when it's come to communication, when it's come to leadership and the relationship, and also when it's come to processes. So do you mean what is the transformation for me personally or what was my observation of the transformation in general? Uh, what was your observation uh, from the transformation of the transformation in a general perspective? Uh, the general perspective of, of the transformation. So I, I've seen them. I've seen them quite a lot. And uh, again, it wasn't only when I was an HR myself because uh, in HR, I only experienced one transformation, which was a very, very global thing uh, when the uh, company was actually acquired by another one and the processes changed, like the, the whole process and the whole procedure of how organization uh, deals with all the processes changed and quite a lot. So uh, we, when it came to values, we changed everything. When it came to different uh, operational processes, different tools that we were, we were using, we changed them. And I also was part of the processes in different organizations when I was more as an observer, as a, a regular employee, 
where uh, organization change just one or several processes. And of course, uh, I would uh, mostly like to speak about the global transformation uh, that I experienced as an HR person myself, because uh, it actually uh, was something that was very new to me. And that was very, very, um, so to say, complex in terms of how we approached dealing with uh, people strategy, how we approached uh, uh, the strategy in general, how we approached values. And uh, it was a very, very um, interesting process because we started from uh, values. We started from uh, from the ground, from the base. And then we decided to build like the constructor uh, of this process. And uh, I believe the company is still in the process of figuring out how to how to end this process. But it was, it was very, very interesting uh, in terms of um, how the things are changing and how the people inside it are changing because for sure when uh, the procedures and different functions are changing when teams are changing when people are actually facing the change in their roles uh, it also comes uh, to the change of of the global environment and uh, and the culture and um, what i actually faced was um, i joined one company which was uh, quite a small startup at the beginning. And then I ended up in the global organization with uh, a lot of different processes inside, a lot of different people, a lot of different new roles that I didn't have, haven't even seen before uh, in, 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 in the first organization that I joined. And this was very, very interesting to me. So how do you consider the impact of that kind of transformation, I mean, the one that you experience into the organizational culture and into every person that works in that organization. Uh, yes, in terms of culture, I would like to first mention that uh, as we are speaking about the trust specifically and transparency, um, so when trust is in place um, and when people have the chance to actually voice their opinion uh, and, and see what is going on uh, and actually have the transparency behind everything, um, there is much more, so to say, this, this was my professional and personal observation, there was much more uh, psychological safety that actually enabled people to take the risk uh, to lean into those changes and to actually follow the leaders and executives um, without being afraid of it. And uh, I experienced uh, different situations and uh, my personal um, conclusion is that uh, the less trust there is, the slower is the process of the change and the slower is the progress afterwards. Uh, meaning that, um, again, uh, the situations were quite different uh, the ones uh, where uh, trust was in place uh, the progress was very very fast and the and people adapted to all the changes in a very very efficient way however uh, I also was part of the process that wasn't so much focused on humans and was very much focused on financial side on the opportunity to take the new markets to to open new products and there this process was a lot slower um, because people people didn't really understand what was going on they didn't have opportunity to voice their opinion and executives and leaders didn't like have this plan for people strategy from the very beginning so they haven't they haven't even thought about this because it was, and I know this happens a lot in different organizations. I'm also speaking to other professionals and to my uh, to my colleagues that actually say that this is one of the most crucial things, so to say, uh, when you actually have the plan for for people, the plan of how they will develop inside the organization after the change happens, um, and they actually say that. This is, this is very important. When we don't have this link, when the change happens, then it can't be successful afterwards. 
and we start losing the personnel, we start losing good people, we actually start losing trust again, uh, which is again very crucial for the uh, processes after the change happens. Uh, and yes, again, the impact on the culture was very different. So I've seen organizations that um, actually did quite a lot in terms of this initial plan for people's strategy. And in those organizations, it was very, very good thing because uh, people adapted to this change very, very fast. And we actually made it to, to a very good uh, conclusions. However, uh, there were organizations where unfortunately there was so much chaos going on. There was so much behind uh, behind the, uh, the people strategy that was not in place at the moment of change. And it ended up that we actually lost many good people uh, that were very crucial for the business. Their skills were, were very crucial. Um, in general, they were, so to say, a very, very like senior people in, inside the company. And of course, when it comes to, to losing personnel and, um, and losing very valuable skills, it's, it's a minus for every organization because it's again, the resources that you, you should uh, unfortunately um, have to find new people, uh, to, to find good people because the markets are very different. And uh, especially the market I'm in, the Baltics, it's 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 a very very um, so to say. I, I don't want to sound like uh, I don't think that people here are are not good enough. Uh, of course they are, but uh, if we are speaking, for instance, about like Great Britain, London, it's it's much more much easier to actually find good specialists there because the market is bigger. Uh, people come from different countries. People come with different backgrounds and here the market is much smaller. Uh, the market is um, more narrowed down in terms of roles that we have inside. And uh, of course, um, when speaking about, for instance, uh, relocating people from other countries, it's also um, not the easiest thing because it again comes to, to financial costs, to different resources. Uh, that's why when change happens in, in, in the environment that I'm, for instance, currently in, it's very crucial to actually have this, this very strong link between uh, what is the main goals of, of the business, what is the business strategy and what is the people strategy and what is the strategy for the human specifically. Yes, this is this is my observation about the culture and in terms of how how it was perceived by individual people. Again, it was very different because there were people that um, it also comes to personal characteristics, in my opinion. Uh, there are people that are not willing to take the changes uh, on the personal level as well. Uh, for instance, when it comes to changing uh, the place of living, when it comes to uh, changing, I don't know, some relationships, uh, etc., and uh, of course, for some of them, it's much harder than uh, for others. But again, when there is trust, we can manage to do everything, even with people that are, feel themselves um, not comfortable with, with the changes. Uh, so it was a very, very different experience. And um, when I was part of the change, uh, even before I was HR, it was very difficult for me to face the change. And I actually left the organization uh, because um, I wasn't part of the HR myself. And um, I wasn't the one who could actually, um, so to say, have, have, have some voice. I was just the regular employee that didn't have the opportunity to see what is inside the change and what is behind the change, behind this idea. Uh, so I was just left with the idea that I was not valued enough and that ex executives and leadership didn't even think about me as a person inside the culture, inside the organization. So my personal uh, decision was just to leave and not deal with this. But when I joined um, HR field, I actually understood what is the what are the pillars behind this process and what it, what does it take for 
HR specialist to actually build this process one by one, uh, pillar by pillar. And this is this is very crucial and very important. And this is what I, where I want to be and develop myself with them. So, uh, I mean, uh, it's quite uh, like quite experience and quite also uh, like um like huge and impact observations. Uh, I want to ask you one question: What will you do different next time? What do you think that you can do different next time in similar situation? Yeah, in a similar situation, uh, I would definitely work more as a as a team with my HR team for sure because uh, we were focused too much on on what the business uh, will have at the end, uh, and we also we are not so much focused on on what were the processes behind the people strategy. That's why we faced many different challenges. And uh, in the end, I had to deal with some people on the personal level, uh, which wasn't the best thing at that moment because the business really had to focus on the global people strategy and how we implement changes and how people adapt to them. And um, I would definitely start planning in advance. I would start thinking from zero how we want to see people, how we want them to perceive the values, the new values probably, how we want them to uh, to to see the organization, what is our personal employer branding afterwards, after the change. And uh, yes, I, I see that this is more of a uh, plan to have beforehand. And uh, because I believe that... Um, I at least tried to do my best uh, when the change uh, happened, and uh, and I I so to say tried to 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 save someone uh, from this change and uh, to actually explain things on a very personal level. However, I believe this isn't the best way to do it because uh, the main idea and the main uh, idea of the change should obviously come from the heads, from the uh, ex executives, from the leadership. And the people operations as such, uh, where I used to to that I used to be part of, I believe that they are more of the ones that implement the change and not communicate the change and not deal with the uh, with how people actually perceive the change, but they are people who help to implement those changes to that help to form the values that help to so to say form the procedures policies that help to find new tools to use but they are not the ones that should be communicating the global the, the idea on the global level and uh, try to so to say find this link because it definitely should come from the leadership in my personal opinion probably this will my thoughts will also change with uh, with uh, some uh, other experiences in the future however um i think that uh hr is also very much about uh what leaders uh think of people and how they approach people's strategy i mean what i see i mean from your experience uh, uh um, from other experience is sometimes is uh, i mean i share with you this about like already like pre-plan different strategies communications and so on and it also it's important to understand what are the risks when you have a change what are the risks when you are growing when you are scaling up and like identifying of course they will evolve because everything evolve but also understanding those risks how can you mitigate and what can you do if you don't have anything to mitigate those risks. So uh, that is from my experience on different companies and now that you shared yours because um, you were on a, a startup. Startups are huge uh, and at the same time are small. 
So when they are starting growing and they start to scale up, it's like, well, okay, this is the moment that we need to like formalize things if you haven't uh, and uh, taking care of finance if you haven't and okay, what would, what can we do if we full um, scale and other companies want to buy us? because of the product that we deliver and so on. So those things are also need to be planned beforehand. I, I mean, from my experience, um, but I could be wrong, of course, but uh, understanding actually what are the risks that are involved in every business, it helps you also with the planifications and to link with people of the strategy as well. Because as you said, in a, it's usually, usually happens that you lose people with the right skills, with the right values, and um, important people for the business. So that is like very difficult to um, replace because we are human beings and we are unique. So what's bring, what each one of us brings to that role specific is on us. It's not about the role as it is. So, um, I wanted uh, to ask you, um, how do you see the technology in all this? What is the role of technology when it's come to change? And what are uh, like the impacts um, in a good way and in a bad way, if we can say so? On, um, I'm very glad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you a lot for this question because uh, this is actually the topic that really interests me a lot and probably we can we can take it further because I also have my personal project and I will explain a bit and more uh, the details afterwards. But yes, uh, speaking about the technology, uh, technology and the topic of HR uh, is, is a very, very crucial thing in my opinion, especially nowadays because it actually ha helps to um, so to say, get rid of some manual things uh, and focus on the global side of, of all the processes and uh, all the things behind them. Um, I experienced uh, quite a lot of uh, processes and changes where I had to deal with um, things that I found not, so to say, relevant, and I didn't want to spend my time on that. And um, I actually would love to have uh, technology at that time, but we didn't have the opportunity. The company didn't have financial resources to do this uh, or anything else behind this. Uh, but I saw that we focused too much on irrelevant stuff rather than on, on the global strategy, on the global side of change and things. Uh, for instance, some document creation or uh, like HRIS platform in Baltics, some people still use like Excel sheets for recruiting or something, uh, which is like, why do they do this? Yeah. <laughs> um, and when it comes to technology, especially in the times of change, I believe this is something that can help to adapt much faster, can help to create the transparency again, because it helps to collect all the information in one place. Uh, it doesn't matter whether this is HRIS platform or whether this is something like, for instance, um, like some Confluence page or something that actually helps to, to uh, state all the values, state everything, all the procedures and all the policies that we have inside the company. And I believe it actually helps to, uh, to operate in a much more efficient way and to focus on more uh, on bigger things on how to to deal with strategy on how to uh, to deal with relationships between people and uh, hrs are not hr people and hr specialists are not about um, thinking of uh, manual uh, stuff and uh, uh, everyone i believe of course, not everyone, but I, I, I see many people that still believe that HR is more of a administ administrative uh, uh, yes. specialist. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I find it very, very uh, sad uh, for myself because, because I, see a, and I see HR as a very strategic role. Uh, and as I mentioned in the very beginning, it is something that is very crucial for business because we 
actually deal with culture and with people that form our product, that form our organization, that form how we appear on the market. And uh, this is not about uh, losing time on some tasks. Of course, we we still still every HR technology is operated by someone that is very uh, that is very very smart in the in different HR topics uh, when it comes to manual tasks uh, tasks as well, or when it comes to um, uh, employment law uh, or uh, anything else. But I believe that we still we we currently have enough resources to actually uh to actually uh see very good some very good platforms that help to uh to uh to actually manage tasks in a much more efficient way to probably free up some time to something more important than uh creating some documents uh, for hours or or collecting some information or change some information uh, uh, something the technology the HR technology should be something managed only by HR people it can be managed by everyone inside the organization the processes can be created by HR but then we can use the platform altogether. Uh, we can see the accesses, we can uh, manage the accesses for different roles and for different positions, but we still can operate inside this altogether. And uh, yes, again, when, when it comes to trust, we can voice our opinion and we can actually implement new changes inside the technology as well. And uh, yes, as I mentioned, when it comes to change, it's, it's much easier when you do have the right technology to actually collect everything, all the information and everything that we change inside the organization to actually give it to the employee as a handbook, as a guideline to how we are operating currently. And uh, I'm obviously one of the people um, who thinks that in innovations and innovative solutions in HR in terms of technology is a must. Uh, I'm also dealing uh, and currently creating a platform myself, um, and I'm, I'm personally very, very proud of it and uh, and of the idea in general. Well, I mean, like, I mean, first, uh, it's like yes, I mean, you can do like simple tasks and little repetitive tasks or simple tasks to to give to the technology to do it because there are different way, different resources, free resources. Then you have upgrade the resources and so on. Um, on, on the other hand, also, uh, I mean, just to focus on the important things such as strategy and then how do you deal um, with that side. And then um, it's like, uh, how do we see the, the connection right now between um, the three things? Uh, it's people, technology, and processes. How do you see that triangle? In the topic of change specifically, or? Um, technology, from your, te the technology, from your uh, personal experience, from your project right now, and um, from a change perspective as well. Technology, change, and people, right? Yeah, I mean, that's my end. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is definitely to come up with a change in what we want to see. Uh, so if we if we try to um, to to understand what is the place of each pillar that you mentioned currently uh, inside the organization, then the first thing is obviously to create the um the idea of the change and to actually um define what we want to see um after the change happens um afterwards these are definitely the processes that we want to see uh how we want to approach people operations what will be the employee cycle after the change happens what we want to implement, what are the new processes that we want to see. Probably there are many organizations and I was also one um, of, um, I was also part of the organization that uh, did some change and 
we actually had many new different processes behind employee cycle that we didn't have before the change happened. And so uh, first, this is the idea of change. Then it's the idea of the processes, of the new processes that will um, that we com come from this change. And afterwards, we try to find the relevant technology uh, that will actually help us to, uh, to implement all those new processes and uh, to actually reflect this new idea of the change. Uh, so the first place would be um, the, the cultural um, changes again, the processes behind it, and the relevant technology. Because when it comes to, to the topic of technology and uh, what I also, um, what is the idea behind my project uh, is that um, I don't like it when, uh, when people and businesses need to adapt to the technology and uh, not vice versa. I really enjoyed it. I enjoy it when we have our own processes, when we have the business, when we have our own values and procedures, and we actually find the technology that we can link to our processes and to our KPIs, to our values, etc. Uh, and what I found in uh, in the places and uh, in organizations where I was working before uh, is that all the people had to to spend time on uh, understanding the technology, on understanding what is behind this technology, and uh, in almost every technology that I've seen, and it doesn't matter whether this is uh, technology for recruiting, learning development. Uh, I don't know, people operations, et cetera. Uh, I've seen that um, there are always processes that the business doesn't need. Um, so for instance, I see the technology, we decide to, uh, to, to, to actually spend resources to, to spend the money of the company on that. But then uh, after some time, we see that we don't like something that this platform offers or we don't like uh, some specific pillars and we don't need them actually uh, but we still have them and we can't get rid of them that's why in uh, my personal project uh, one of the main idea is uh, the construction of the process from the initial stage from zero that you can actually build the process for your own business needs that you don't actually need to face what the organization, the technology, the business is offering you, but you rather create your own one, which is uh, which is a very, very um, interesting idea, but we will see uh, in the end whether people like it or not. Uh, I will love to, because it's like you have, to, uh, like, yes, you have that kind of different, like, technologies. Oh, I mean, you go to the market and you will see a ton of them. And then that is what happens. It's like a, a full clothes package and you don't use a lot of things because they don't fully adapt to what you need. And then you have other ones that they say they, you can customize it. Um, yes, into a certain point, but then it depends on each one. Okay, I like what I see, but I actually don't like so yeah. So I would love to Absolutely. see that. Your project. In yeah, place. I will have yeah. a, I will have a different podcast and uh, by the end of February, I guess, where I actually will dig deeper into what uh what the, the platform will be about. And uh yes, probably I will share the link with you as well. <laughs> Would be great. Thank you. I mean, just to understand that. Please go on. Yeah. So, um, can you, um, because you were saying about um, your project uh, when it's come to the, the technology is that you can build uh, from zero, I mean, from scratch. So what do you think that something like this, to, something like this uh, to any type of organization um, will impact on the day-to-day 
um, business and also when it comes to the long-term um, goals of the organization? Um, well, first of all, uh, it would definitely help to, again, um, again, focus very much on the business side, uh, focus very much on the strategy. So we don't have to spend time on some very simple tasks. We don't have to spend time on actually mm -hmm. uh, seeing what we don't want to see and uh, facing what we don't need. Uh, so uh, when when it comes to construction, um, it can be uh, in both sides. For instance, we have a startup that doesn't have any HR processes in place for the moment. So they would be able to construct it from zero, for instance. In my opinion, one of the main pillars that every business should start with is recruiting for sure, because we first recruit people and afterwards we deal with them uh, as people operations, learning development, uh, engagement, motivation, etc. cetera. And, uh, um, and as well, the second uh, part is the global organizations that actually want to implement some changes that actually uh, want to implement some uh, new processes, new procedures. And again, they can build the process uh, from zero. And I probably um, forgot to mention that this will be the platform and uh, actually pr the prototype is in place already, um, which is based on AI, which is a very, very um, wow topic uh, of 2024. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, probably in, in all the future years as well. And uh, it will actually help to, to guide the business through the process and to actually uh, give some hints on how to do better for, for your uh, needs specifically, for your uh, KPIs, for your uh, specific uh, change or what you want to implement. So, um, because currently, again, when I see uh, technologies, and probably I've not see, seen every technology on the market, for sure, I've seen just probably like five or even less percent. Uh, but uh, when I see a technology, I always uh, have a question, why do, why do I need to adopt my business processes to this technology and not vice versa? And so with, uh, with the technology that I'm currently uh, trying to develop, uh, it will be more of a tool to help to focus on business needs, to focus on the relevant global tasks rather than focusing on uh, simple tasks. And also this would um, actually help people who, who are probably uh, for instance, I know, uh, and I'm I'm the person that doesn't come from from the legal uh, um, with the legal background. For instance, it was uh, quite a hard um, time for me to to actually uh, deal with employment law when I first joined the human resources um, uh, field, and this would actually be the um, uh, the platform that would. Uh, help companies to do things uh, right on a legal level. Uh, and uh, I, of course, I'm not saying that we are trying to replace uh, good specialists, trying to, to somehow get rid of uh, relevant HR specialists and uh, not, uh, of course not. We are just trying to help them to, to focus on more crucial things on more uh, probably complex uh, complex situations because uh, I personally also have dealt quite a lot with the uh, conflict situations when uh, I actually have to implement a lot of different uh, laws in terms of uh, employment. I have to I have, I have to deal with many different processes at once. So the platform would really help to focus on on relevant things uh, would help to get rid of simple tasks and also would would be uh, as a very, very nice guideline of how to deal with the complex solutions, with complex changes. And uh, I believe that artificial intelligence in general in, in the topic of HR is a very, very uh, powerful element. And um, I would not love to see uh, people that, uh, 
that create platforms to actually get rid of uh, good HR specialists, to get rid of uh, uh, good legal uh, people inside the organization because uh, every technology, every HR technology should be still managed by very pow powerful people with uh, very powerful knowledge behind HR. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, this would be just the a, a very nice um, addition to their knowledge that will would help to to actually focus on more uh, on more strategic things and more global things. Wait, like, thank you for sharing that insights. It's like very interesting because uh, there are some myths around AI, not just related with HR, but in general. So it's great that you do bring us your insight and observation. So thank you so much for that. So uh, if we have to like summarize our conversation, um, what will you say around this, about change, about trust, leadership, and the people focus? What will you say about that? Um, yeah, so I believe um, this is the question more about my, uh, so to say, like learning Yes. from everything and a summary from everything and uh, yeah I believe uh, one of the main learnings from uh, my experience however it wasn't uh, big, big enough uh, and it, it's definitely that companies and the people driving the change should never think that uh, people will accept everything and shouldn't be taking them for granted meaning that we need to create transparency, we need to create trust, uh, because first, as I mentioned, the first quote, uh, it's first transparency, and then it's trust that comes from transparency that leaders spread, the executives spread, the HR spread um, inside the organization. And we have to actually find and use all the possible resources to actually spread the transparency. So we have trust and we have people who want to, to go with this change, who want to, to lean into the change and who still decide to stay inside the organization when the change happens. Um, <clears throat> and for that, we for sure um, should not only focus on, on the business side of every change on, again, financial profits, uh, opportunities for new markets and products. However, to also build a clear plan for people and their strategy of how we inform people uh, of what change means to them and what changes uh, will, how change will affect their um the whole employment employee cycle, how change will affect their role, how change will affect um, their relationships between uh, ex executives and regular employees, as well as their own relationship between employees. And uh, we have to use as, as many tools and as many resources as possible to actually, to create the trust because trust never, trust isn't something that is, um, that comes naturally trust is something that uh, is created by by people again and of course by leadership and unfortunately yes I, I i i see quite a lot of people that want to see good people that trust in in the organization trust in this change trust their ideas but they don't want to spread the transparency or they, they don't want to spend time on focusing on the transparency and on actually creating the sense of trust. Um, so um, yes, with this with this discussion, I, I wanted to, to just remind everyone how important that is to, to spread the transparency and trust and uh, what, is, uh, what is the additional, so to say, tools and resources that we can use to to actually um, to actually have this plan for people because um, for sure we 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 recruit people not to lose them and that's why when we implement change uh, I believe we should definitely uh, focus on keeping them inside the company and uh, making them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Anastasia for sharing your insight and your experience. I mean, it's, um, it is a wow experience like you have. So uh, 
yeah, thank you so much for this. I hope to hear more about your personal project for sure. Um, my last question right now is where do people reach out to you? So also they can learn about your personal project. Where do they reach out to me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, I believe uh, it's 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 yes, something I have. Will, yes, we will add it into the episode description for sure. Uh, but just uh, to to have it here as well. Um, so people also listening are listening to where they can reach you in case they want to come. Yes, yeah, so first of all, it's my LinkedIn, uh, Anastasia Arfanova. Uh, please um, add me uh, as a friend uh, there. Uh, for sure, it's an email. And um, I can, uh, I'm always available uh, almost on every social media. So you will find myself uh, in, in uh, like everywhere. Uh, but I try to do uh, uh, as much as possible on LinkedIn. And I'm actually currently in the search of the uh, new role. So uh, you can hear quite a lot from me, but I believe that uh, currently um, the main platform would still be LinkedIn. And um, yes, so you will hear me from there. And uh, yes, please reach out to me in, in case you have any questions. And I would actually love to, uh, to participate in um, different projects uh, that probably deal with change or implementation of new, um, of, of different, new uh, processes um, inside the organization so currently this is my passion and where I want to develop myself further great thank you so much Anastasia once again and I hope that we we talk soon again um, until then um, and yeah take care and I'll see you soon thank you very much Laura bye bye Bye. Thanks to everyone who makes these podcasts possible. In particular, thanks to the guest speakers and to you who are on the other side listening. If you liked it and were able to learn something new today, we invite you to share it with your entire network. We also invite you to subscribe to our different channels to follow our latest news. If you are interested in being part of these series, you can apply by clicking on the link that is in the general presentation of the podcast. Until next time. A special thanks to the boys. Kashis Wadbani.